morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning to you as well. This neck loop is not wide enough. get started. Welcome from Canada. Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm going to make bagels. I have a uh, this is my pot right here. I'm just waiting for this to boil. And uh, we, uh, we bake bagels right here. I like how you say bagels. How do I say bagels? Bagels. Bagels, bagels, bagels. Bagels. Bagels? Beagles. Beagles? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're pretty popular. We have five stores. Uh, we have two in Vancouver, uh, two on the, on the North Shore uh, in, in North Vancouver. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> um, and then we have, uh, we have another store in Richmond. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty popular. Uh, Rosemary Rock Salt is our namesake. And... Um, I can tell you from experience, it's the most popular bagel because uh, that's the one I bake the most often. The largest volume. Yeah, rosemary rock salt is the most popular bagel. I'll show you one once I've baked one. And, uh, I might have one. I'm just get, I'm getting my seeds here.
Yeah, everything, uh, everything bagels are pretty popular here too. Um, I guess it goes, it's probably uh, rosemary rock salt's most popular, then, um, then sesame, and then everything's probably third place. Pizza, yeah, we uh, it's a good idea is making pizza bagels. It's a good idea.
Hello, welcome to the stream, all. all. I just put my first batch in. Just gonna wait for that now. Play some tunes. screen that one up. waiting for my bagels here, my beagles, the eggles. I don't know how to properly say it, apparently.
so I messed up there. <laughs> uh, still waiting for my bagels here. They're almost, oh, there's a couple popping up. <clears throat> I guess we should get ready for that, for the uh, fact that my bagels are ready here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's start baking bagels. master's program. Oh, uh, no, I haven't yet. I think that's something that, uh, maybe next year, I don't know. I'm still paying off my first education in debt from, uh, my, my undergrad. Oh, I'm still waiting. Uh, I'm taking, a. am doing an online course right now. I'm actually, I think I could probably do a master's online. That, that would be something I'd look into. Um, maybe uh, University of Toronto or something like that. They have really good online pr uh, programs. I'm taking a TEFL course right now online through, um, through the University of Toronto. I need to work more diligently on it though. So it's slacking. You go to uh, University of Toronto? Oh, nice. Honey water smells like apple juice, I just realized. Be going pretty good. I need to pull this table back. Oh, damn. Apparently, I'm too weak to do it. Hamlin towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover City. The river western deep and wide washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you've never spied. But when begins my ditty almost 500 years ago? To see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. 
rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles and ate the cheeses from the vats and licked the soup from the cook's own ladles, split open the kegs of salted sprats, made nests in the men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking or shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. "'Tis clear," cried they, "'our mayor is a naughty, and as for our corporation, shocking, to think we buy gowns lined with ermine, for dolts who can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our ermine. You hope because you're old and obese to find the furry civic robes ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking, try the remedy we are lacking, or sure as fate will send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council, at length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I'd my ermine gown tell, I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one track one's bring, I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain, over a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should happen? At the chamber door with a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little to wonder his craft. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister than a too long opened oyster, save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous for a plate of turtle green and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes on a mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go pit a pat. Come in, cried the mare, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His long queer coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red. And he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes each like a pin, and light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek nor beard on chin. But lips or smile went out and in, there was no guessing his kith or kin, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, it's as my great grandsire, starting up at the trump of doom's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced towards the counter table, and please, Your Honor, said he, I am able, by means of secret charm to draw, all the creatures living beneath the sun, the crawler swim and fly or run, after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they notice round his neck a scarf with a yellow stripe, to match with his coat itself, same check. And as scarf's end hung a pipe, and his fingers they noticed were ever strained, as if impatient to be playing upon his pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, Pied Piper as I am, in Tartari I fred the cam, last June from his huge swarms of gnats. I eased in Asia than I am, of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand guilders? One, fifty thousand was the exclamation of an astonished mayor and corporation. Into the street the piper stepped, smiling first a little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe the while. Like a musical adept to blow his pipe, his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled. And ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, he heard as if an army muttered, and a muttering grew to a grumbling, and a grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses came the rats tumbling, great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, tawny rats, Grave old plotters, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and pricking whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the Pied Piper for their lives. From street to street he piped advancing, and step to step they followed dancing, until they came to the River Wester, wherein all plunged and perished, save one who stout as Julius Caesar, swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to rat land home his commentary, which was, at first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe, and putting apples wondrous ripe into the cider presses gripe, and moving away a pickle tub boards, and leaving a jar of conserved cupboards, and drawing the corks of train oil flasks, and breaking the hoops of butter casks, and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far than by harp or by salaries breathed, called out, O oh, rats, rejoice, the world has grown to a vast dry saltery, so munch on, crunch on, take your nunch on, 
breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and just a bulky sugar punch on, already staved like a great sun shone, gracious scarce an inch before me, just as me thought it said come bore me, I found the west rolling over me. You should have heard the Hamlin people ring the bells they rock the steeple. Go, cried the man, get long poles, poke out the nests and block up the holes. Consult with carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats. Went suddenly up to face the Piper Perk in the marketplace. The first, if you please, my thousand guilders. A thousand guilders, the mayor looked blue, so did the corporation too. For council dinners made rare havoc, with claret, moselle, bin de grave, hop. And half the money would replenish to sell his biggest butt of Rhenish to pay the sum to a wondering fellow with gypsy coat of red and yellow. Besides, we were aware of the knowing wink. Our business was done at the river's brink. We saw with our eyes the vermin sink. What's dead can't come to life, I think. So, friend, we're not folks to shrink. But we're doing to take you something to drink and a matter of money to put in your poke. But as for the gilders, what we spoke of them, as you well know, was a joke. Besides, and losses of meat is thrifty. A thousand guilders, come take fifty. Piper's face gone, he cried. No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promise to visit by dinner time Baghdad, except the prime of the head cook's potage, all he's rich in, for having left in the Caleb's kitchen of a nest of scorpions, no survivor. With him I prove no bargain driver. With you, don't think I'll be this diver. The folks who put me in a passion. They find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I broke? Being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival, with idle pipe and vesture piebald. Threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe to squeeze for a cane. An airy blew three notes, such sweet, soft notes as the musicians couldn't be the evening wrapped in air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling, a very crowd's jostling and pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, little tongues chattering, like foals in front of a barley of scattering. Oh, came the children running, all the little boys and girls, with rosy cheeks and flax and curls, and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, tripping and skipping around merrily after. The wonderful music was shouting and laughter. The mayor was dumb and the council stood, as if they're changed in the blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry, to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with an eye the joyous crowd at the piper's back, and how the mayor was on the rack, and the wretched council's bosoms beat, as the piper turned from the high street, to where the west rolled its waters, white in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from south to west, and to Coffer Hill his steps addressed, and after him the children pressed, great was the joy in every breast. She never crossed the mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop. And we shall see our children stop. When lo, they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide. As if the cabin was suddenly hollowed, the piper advanced and the children followed. And when all were in to the very last, the door of the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No, one was lame and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you blame his sadness, he was used to say, It is dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town in jest at hand. Where fruit trees grew, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, flowers were forth a fairer view, and everything was strange and new. The sparrow is bred a peacock here, and their dogs are around our fellow deer, and honeybees have lost their stings, and horses were born with eagles' wings. And just as I became assured, my lame folk was speedily cured. The music stopped, and I stood still, and found myself outside the hill, left behind against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of their country more. Alas, alas, for Hamelin, there came into many a burger's pate, a text which says that heaven's gate opens the rich at his easy rate, as the needle's eye takes the camel in. The mayor said east, west, north, and south, call for the paper by word of mouth, wherever was men's lot to find him silver and gold to his heart's content, if only he returned the way he went to bring the children behind him. But when they saw it was lost endeavor, and Piper and Dances were gone forever, they made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words do not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, in the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street. Were anyone playing pipe or tabor, was sure for his teacher to lose his labor, nor suffered the hospital or tavern, shocked with mirth the streets so solemn, and opposite the place of the cavern, 
Here with the story on a column, an on great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away. And there it stands this very day. And I must not admit to say, then Transylvania there is a tribe of alien people who ascribe the way and dress of which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers has to, to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison into which they were Japan a long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin towns in Brunswick land. But how or why they don't understand. So Lily let me and you be wipers of scores out with old men, especially pipers. And if they should pipe us free from rats or from mice, if we promise them aught, let us keep our promise. Ah. Mornings. That's not cool. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have, co which have connected them to another, and assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal stations to which the laws of nature, nature's God, entitled them, a decent respect of the, decent respect of the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which well, I don't, I don't. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm so tired this morning. Viewer, how are you doing this morning? We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, but among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hello. Welcome to the stream. My name's Steve, and I am baking bagels. Yeah, go ahead. Serious question. I don't know if I'll answer it, but go ahead. What's my thought on Glover? Oh. I know. I, I, uh, I think the uh, scientists that are doing the, the work understand it better than I do. And I trust the science. I trust the science scientists that are um, raising the alarm. And I believe we should do something about it. Collectively. 
on a global scale? <laughs> well, good answer. I trust scientists that are doing science. That's all I can say. Yeah, I'm a baker. Uh, no, I just bake bagels. I would love, I'd love to try to make a sourdough bagel though. That'd be interesting. Hey, hello. Excuse me. I need a coffee. I would order one, but my my phone is currently being used right now. Don't want to shut down the stream. What time is it? It is almost 5:30. I got a late start this morning. My first thought was he lied in every word, that hoary cripple with malicious eye, asking to watch the working of his lie on mine, and mouth scarce able to afford suppression of the glee, the pursed and scored its edge at one more victim gained thereby. What else should he be set for with his staff? What saved waylay with his lies and snare? All travelers who might find him posted there. And asked the road, I guess what skull-like laugh would break, what crutch could write my epitaph for pastime with the dusty thoroughfare? If at his counsel I should turn aside into ominous track, which all agree hides the dark tower, yet acquiescing I did turn as he pointed, neither pride nor hope rekindling at the end descried, so much as gladness some end might be. For what with my whole world wide wondering, what with my search drawn out through years, my hope dwindled into a ghost not fit to cope with that stripper's joy success would bring, I hardly tried now to rebuke the spring my heart made finding failure in its scope. As a sick man, very near to death, sees the dead indeed, and feels begin and end the tears, and takes farewell of each friend, and hears one bid the other go, draw breath, freely outside. Since all is over, he saith, and the blow fallen, no grieving can amend. While some discuss if the other graves be room enough for this, and when a day suits best for carrying the corpse away, with care about banners, scarfs, and staves, and still the man hears all and only craves, he may not shame such tender love and stay. Thus I had for so long suffered in this quest, heard failure prophesied so oft being rich, so many times among the band to win. The knights who too dark power searching dressed their steps, the gist of fail as they seemed best, and all doubt was now should I be fit. So quiet as despair, despair I turned from him, a hateful cripple, out of his highway into the path he pointed, all the day being a dreary one. At best, and dim was settling into its clothes, yet shot one grim red leer to see the plane catch its astray. For Mark, no sooner was I fairly found, pledged the plane after a pace or two, than pausing through backward a last view, over the safe road twas gone, great plane all round, nothing but plain to the horizon's bound, I must go on, naught else remained to do. So on I went, I think I never saw such starved and noble nature, nothing grow, for flowers as well expect a cedar grow, but chortle and scourge according to their law, might propagate their kind with none to awe. You think a burr had been a treasure trove. No penry and nerdness increments in some strange hole where the land's portion. See or close your eyes, said nature peevishly, and nothing skills. I can't help my case. Tis last judgment's fire must cure this place. Shall sign its clods and set my prisoners free. If there pushed any ragged thistle stalk above its mates, its head was chopped. The bents were jealous else. What made the holes and rents in the dock's harsh horse leaves? Bruised as to balk, all hope of greenness. Tis a brute must walk, passing their life over the brute's intents. 
As to the grass that grew as scarce as hair and leprosy, thin dry blades pricked the mud which underneath looked kneaded up with blood. One stiff blind horse, his every bone a stare, stood stupefied however he came there, thrust out past service from the devil's stud. Alive, he might be dead for aught I know, with red, gaunt, and caleb neck astrain, and shut eyes beneath the rusty mane. Seldom went such grotesqueness with such woe. I never saw a brute that hated so. He must have been wicked to deserve such a thing. I shut my eyes and turned them on my heart, as a man calls for wine before he fights. I asked one draft of earlier happiness sights. Here fit me I could both play the part. Think first, fight afterwards, the soldier's art. One taste of old times, that's all to rights. Not it. I fancied Cuthbert's reddening face beneath its garniture of curly gold. Dear fellow, till I almost felt him fold. An arm in mine to fix me to that place, that way he used. Alas, one night's disgrace. I went my heart's new fire and left it cold. Giles, then, the soul of honor, there he stands. Frank is ten years ago when night at first. An honest man should dare, he said. He durst good, but the scene shifts. Fall what hangman's hand pinned to his breast a parchment. His own band reads it. Poor traitor spit upon and cursed. Better this present than a past like that. Back there to fort my darkening path. No sound, no sight as far as the eye can strain. Will the night send a howl or a bat, I asked. When something on the dismal flat came to arrest my thoughts and change their train. A sudden little river crossed my path, as unexpected as a serpent came. No tides congenial to the glooms. This is a froth by might have been a bath of the fiend's glowing hoof, to see the wrath of its black eddies be spat with flakes and spoons. So petty and so spiteful, all along low scrubby almonds kneeled over it, drenched willows flung them headlong in a fit of rough despair, a suicidal throng, the river which had done them all the wrong, whatever that was, rolled by but heard no whit. Which while I courted good St. Thomas of Spirit, set my foot upon a dead man's cheek, each step or feel the spear I thrust to seek with tank, hollows tangled with his hair or beard. It may have been a water rat I speared, but ugh, it sounded like a baby shriek. Glad was I to reach the other bank, now for a better country, vain presage. Who are the strugglers? What war did they wage? Whose savage trunk could thus pad the dank soil to a clash? Toads in a poison tank, or wild cats in red hawk cage. The fight must so have seemed in that foul sir. What penned them there with all the plain to choose? No footsteps leading to that horrid muse. None out of it. Mad brew had set to work their brains, no doubt, like galley slaves Turk. Pits for his pastime, Christians against Jews. As far as ever from... Uh, more than that, a furlong arm. Why there? What bad use was that engine for? That wheel, or brake not wheel, that harrow fit to reel men's bodies out like silk. With all the air of tulip to pop a stool. On earth left unaware of brought to sharpen its rusty teeth of steel. Then came some stub ground, once a wood, next a marsh would seem, now mere earth, desperate and done with, so the fool finds mirth, makes a thing and mars it, till his mood changes, and off he goes, within a rude bog, clay and marsh, sand and stark black dearth. Now blotches rankling colored gay and grim, now patches where some leanness of the soils broke into m moss or substances like boils. Then came a palsied oak, a cleft in him, a distorted mouth that splits its rim, gaping at death and dies while it coils. As far as ever from the end, not in the distance but the evening not, to point my footsteps further at the thought, great black bird Apollyon's bosom friend, sailed past nor beat his wide wings, dragon pen, to brush my cap perchance the guide I sought. For looking up aware I somehow grew, the plain had given place all round to mountains with such names of grace, mere heights and heaps now stolen in view. How thus they surprised me, soul but you, how to get from there was no clearer case. Yet half I seemed to recognize the trick of mischief had happened to me, God knows when, in a bad dream perhaps, here ended then progress this way, when in the very nick of giving up one more time came a click, as when the trap shuts you're in the den. Burningly it came upon me all at once. This was the place. Those two hills crouched like two bulls, lock horn and horn in fight, while to the left a tall scout mountain, dunce daughtered a dozing as very nuns after a lifetime of training for the sight. What in the midst lay but the tower itself? The round squat turret built, blind as a fool's heart, built of brown stone without a counterpart in the whole world. The tempest mocking out points to the shipman, thus the unseen shelf he strikes on, only when timbers start. Not see, because of night perhaps, why day came back for that. Behind it left the dying sunset, kindled through a cleft, 
the hills like two giants in the hunting lay, chin upon hand to see the game at bay, now stab and end the creature too that hath not here, when noise was everywhere it told, increasing like a bell, names in my ears of lost adventurers, my peers, how such was strong and such was bold, and such was fortunate, yet each of old, lost, lost one moment, now the woe of years. There they stood, ranged along the hillside met, viewed the last of me, for one more picture in a sheet of flame, I saw them and knew them all, and yet dauntless, the slughorn to my lips I set and blew, child roll into a dark tower came. Child roll into a dark tower came by Robert Browning. Morning. Welcome. About to take out my first batch. Biatch. Let's get this biatch out.
Hello, welcome to the stream. keep it wet it does burn um, but it, it uh, as long as you keep the boards wet um, they don't really burn up too quickly uh, they were they wear out about uh, after two or three months of use so they do burn but uh, they burn slowly we use mahogany which is a really hard wood and it lasts it's quite durable it lasts quite a while they do they do burn on the edges though that's what, um, eventually they become useless after, after three months. Yeah. We also try to ro rotate the board, so we're always flipping them over, or um, sometimes I'll put the inside board on the outside. Um, and that helps keep them cool, cooler. Because this, this board gets really hot, and this board not so much. I think I'm gonna shut down the stream. Uh, I'm gonna gonna order a coffee from Tim Hortons. I'm really dying for some coffee. I usually wait for our coffee here, but um, I need coffee now, so I'm gonna order it online with my phone, which is currently being used. So yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I think I can shut it off now. I'll be back. Uh, we're back at commercial tomorrow morning. And uh, yeah, I hope you have an excellent morning. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks.